This video shows you how to replace or rotate your semi truck or trailer tire. In this case, we're working with a 53 foot van trailer and the inner tire, that inside tread is having some wear and I needed to even out. Do this after alignment because you're just gonna more than likely recreate the problem. So the lowest point that I can access where we'll have the lift is gonna be in this area as shown here. The best time to do this is when your trailer is empty. However, that's not always the case. And the jack that I have here, you can find that at either Harbor Freight or even at a truck stop or truck dealership and they're about 20 tons so it will lift 40,000 pounds. If you're able to, what, what I would do is slide the tandems all the way back so you have the least amount of weight on there while doing the service. But the jack is good enough to lift 40,000 pounds so you should be alright. After you get that up and off the air, make sure, I forgot to mention this, you chalk your wheels or find something to make it not roll away or towards you. So what I'm doing now is loosening the air lines and you're gonna wanna pay some super close attention to this. So the hub cover or the seal, the green part, you can remove it if you're scared of possibly hitting it, which is made out of plastic, so it is a high probability, especially if you've never done this. But I've done this on other trailers before, so I know what to expect. After loosening the threads on here, what we're gonna use next is a three quarter inch impact wrench made by Milwaukee. Now I do have the biggest battery that you can find that comes with it. So if you just use your typical small Milwaukee batteries or even the medium size, it might work. But the thing is, is that the bigger battery will obviously have a lot more juice. And it really is a breeze to take all these off with this tool. No special muscle needed off of this. So what's up next is we're gonna use the pry bar. The pry bar will give you leverage, especially if the hub is frozen with the rim. And after getting this off, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this down on the ground. And depending on what you would wanna have as the inner tire, what we'll do is we will remove the extension for the air hose and we'll swap them. And after we get them swapped, I actually it's before, make sure, or in my case, I just do it just for the heck of it, some anti-seize. Cause once you get towards like the winter season trying to get this removed, it might make it break or whatever. I did spray some rust penetrant on this beforehand so it came off pretty easily. And after you have those removed, we're gonna do the exact same thing with the two pry bars. Those things, I found them off Walmart, and I think they were like 10 to 15 bucks a piece, and I got two of them. And they make like quick work on lifting the tire and getting it lined up. And as you were able to tell to get this thing lined up, all I did was play with the pry bar and make it move one way so that way I can get it to turn. And after you get everything set, make sure that you hand tighten all of the lug nuts one piece at a time. And once you know for sure that it's threading on there pretty good, my Milwaukee has four impact settings from one all the way through four to the one key. So start with the one setting and get it seated all the way around. So just like with any other tire installation, there is a torque pattern, you can look it up online. In this case, I do crisscross in a way that's like every other lug. And after from one, I move to three and then four. I also reconnect the hoses to the hub afterwards. And again, just for the heck of it, I just put some anti-seize on there. And hopefully that is helpful for you. If it is, give it a thumbs up and thanks for watching. I forgot to mention that make sure you line up the holes for the wheels so that way it lines up with the hub seal and the connections just like how it's shown on this video. It is super important or else you're going to do this thing all the way over again.